been subscribed to this channel since its early days, you'll know that I actually used to be a Let's Play channel. Uh, during that time, I played a variety of games to fill a certain daily upload quota, which didn't really leave me a whole lot of time to find quality things to show off. It ended up just not really being the way that I wanted to present myself on the platform, which is why I make the kinds of videos that I do now. The more you know! While a lot of what I played was whatever was at the top of the itch.io page, every now and then I have to dig a little deeper to find something that I thought would be fit enough to be a day's upload. Kind of like getting lost in a town you're unfamiliar with and stumbling into a cute little cafe, every now and then I'd find a diamond in the rough or two on occasion. A few of these games have stuck with me ever since I gave up the Let's Playing life, and one of them is what I'd like to share with you today. It's called Cat, or Cat Head Emoji. When I put the Cat Head symbol into Twitch's game category thingy, it popped up with the name Meow. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know, don't ask me. Whatever the game's actual name is, I think it defines every aspect of what I consider an integral part of a compelling and interactive video game experience. Allow me to explain. At first, the game doesn't seem like much. I mean, it literally doesn't even take up 20% of your screen while playing it. This is the actual size of the window you play this in. <laughs> it cracks me up every time. Now, normally you'd expect a press start or whatever keyboard key prompt to get into the actual game, but instead you're meant with this minimalist screen with just enough info to pique your interest. Obviously, the squares on the bottom right are the arrow or WASD keys on a keyboard, so we press all all four and are met with a little jingle to set the mood. things I think this game does immaculately well is its usage of very little to signify something of importance. If you are curious, those four buttons are the only controls for the entire game. You quite literally only go up, down, left, and right. That little jingle you heard is the last bit of music you'll hear for a while, since the majority of background noise you'll hear is just the ocean's waves or cave ambience. Now in Meow, there's two simple concepts that you'll need to be aware of. Firstly, Water is everywhere, and given that we're a cat and not a fish, we can only swim a short distance before wiping out and appearing where we first started. We'll need to have a good understanding as to where we're going in order to progress to wherever we're trying to go. Secondly, our sight range is very limited. This is intentional to make every little discovery that much more impactful. The game is designed around the idea that we as players should take in each new section of the map little bits at a time to create a larger map in our heads. We do this by finding vantage points like these trees to gain a better understanding of our surroundings, one step at a time. From our starting point, there's quite literally only one other island to the top left, so we head over there and we're met with a few new concepts, branching paths and a cave system. Using the nearby trees reveals two paths that lead somewhere off screen, meaning now we have a few different paths to explore. Entering the cave slaps us in the face with another banger jingle. Signifying, well, something. It's hard to really describe how well I think this game implores the player to look a little further, to find all the little strings that connect each other, all the while admittedly giving the player very little. I mean, come on! This is a game with only four interactable buttons and like 50 pixels of screen space. Exiting the cave system actually places us at the end of the left path from the previous cave entrance, meaning that it's actually pretty easy to visualize based on how long the cave system is, where you probably are now after you exit. The next tree only reveals an area of the map that you cannot swim to, given how the rocks block your path, meaning that the next cave system is all that you can explore for the time being. Inside this cave is a small lake with an unassuming bit of walkable rock about halfway across. Swimming onto this actually resets your swim timer without it really being necessary for the stretch of cave you're currently in. I really want to stress how well I think this game teaches the player about different mechanics without a single pop-up or text bubble ruining the flow of the game. 
even standing still while you take in the ambience of the ocean setting around you reveals that if you don't move for a while, your kitty takes a quick nap while you figure out where you'd like to go next. This is actually kind of important for a bit later in the game and not me just pointing out idle animations, I swear. Exiting the tunnel and climbing the nearby tree reveals two paths and a set of islands to the north that you can't quite get the lay of how you'll reach them. If you head left, you arrive at what seems to be a completely pointless area. Swing in any direction nets you nothing, yet one glance at the rock placed snugly in the center should pique your interest given that there seems to be an indentation in it that looks an awful lot like the cat you're currently playing as. This is a game about exploration, and you'll find that the time you spend soaking in the comparably small amount of area in regards to larger games that have fewer areas of significance will provide you with a level of satisfaction that's really hard to describe. I mean, even the idea of downloading the game in the first place is a testament to how the game is able to draw in the adventurous spirit. Maybe even this video is your calling to give this game a try. Given how small my channel currently is and the possibility that you not only found this video, but watched this far in despite how cringy I can sound at times could be pointedly described as fate. If listening is more your thing, then let's continue. Heading to the right hints you with something you probably weren't expecting. People. While this doesn't have any direct influence on gameplay, it does contribute a bit to the small amount of discoverable lore within the game as you begin to wonder how a society of humans could live on a stretch of islands like these. They even have a large ship which functions as another version of a tree if you use their mass or as a different kind of cave system if you enter its lower levels, which of course hits you with another jingle. In the back is a brightly lit pillow, seemingly beckoning you to lay on it. Remembering that your kitty loves to nap if you're not doing anything important, I'm sure most players ran straight here and let the screen fade to black. If you do that, you're met with this. You're sent back to the title screen, and now in the water lay parts of the ship you took shelter in. Is this the ending? Surely not, given how unsatisfying it is. Plus, there were areas to explore above and below the ship. This presents the player with something a little more important than a lot of people seem to expect, a goal. And rather than it being blatantly in your face through dialogue, it affects you directly through mere happenstance. If there's more yet to do, then there must be a way to obtain a better ending, more areas to explore. Perhaps have some secrets to uncover. But what on earth could a mere cat do to stop such an event from occurring? So that's it then. The goal of the game is to satisfy the conditions to prevent the same tragedy from happening again. The game provides the player with enough to do and a goal to achieve, all without a single line's worth of text, of explanation on the game's page, or anywhere within the game itself. Obviously I'm not praising this game for having an end game goal to achieve, that'd be fucking ridiculous. And I'm not putting down other more sandboxy games for not having a concrete ending. I just consider the concept of an infinitely playable game a bit sad because eventually you'll put it down for the last time and not realize it. I'd rather remember myself beating a game over forgetting about one because I grew bored of it for some reason. There comes a time in a game's lifespan where the player begins fiddling with the mechanics. And games like Super Mario 64 have survived over 20 years of relevance on base mechanics alone. And it's times like these when the player begins wondering what if? If the game has lore hidden out of the way here, perhaps there's more to find elsewhere on the map. If every cave has these lines symbolizing the walls, why is this one colored in such a way? Oh, that's because it's a hidden room with a jaw-dropping statue seemingly recently chiseled and left to be discovered. If there's a secret hidden in this wall, maybe there are more hidden in other places. If I can stand on things in the middle of the water to refresh my swim timer, what if these lily pads do the same thing? If there's a gate blocking my path into this room, what if there's a way to get onto the other side of it? If there's deeper parts of this cave, what if there are other caves with other deeper parts? <clears throat> 
Where this game goes from I sleep to real shit is with this area here. I won't tell or show you how to get there since I don't really think it's all that difficult, but it's clear something huge is hidden just beneath the sand. Remembering how cave systems work, we take a brief detour underground. Remembering the trick that some walls may hold secrets and that you can refresh your swim timer on above water objects, we spelunk our way deeper into some mythical location. There's so much to discover here, so many little seemingly insignificant things that add just a little bit more flavor and satisfaction to the overall journey. And it's not until you've completely lost yourself in the annals of a long forgotten civilization that you realize the true nature of everything going on. Not until you find yourself on the other side of that rock system do you realize exactly how far you've come. The bounty to claim along the way is the discovery hinting at something more. The rewards that you get aren't power-ups, they're finding what you've been looking for and so much more. It's finding out that you are not alone and that out there in the great wide world, there may be somebody that's destined to be with you. They're adding significance to otherwise droll and basic concepts, and all of it was discovered by you, the player. It's satiating that curiosity that makes adventuring so rewarding. That curiosity that's not unlike a cat's, if you'll excuse the comparison. Meow is a game that defines what I love about video games. The ability to inspire and communicate so much without even needing to say the exact words you mean. To empower Empower someone and make them feel significant in a world constantly reminding them otherwise, without going through great lengths to hype up or otherwise inflate their ego. You should play the game, I'll link it in the description below. I purposely left the ending vague because I think if this video resonated with you, then you should go and grab that for yourself. Or watch someone do a let's play of it. Yeah. I don't even think my video is doing this game justice. It's quite literally one of my favorite indie games ever created. The game was made by the developers Sentfear and Tekori with music by one MC Heifer. If I pronounced any of that wrong, I'm terribly sorry. I'm a little, I am um, a stupid. I'm not familiar with these people's other works, but now that I'm going hard at making my mark in the video essay scene, perhaps we'll find some hidden gems along the way. Anyway, there's other games from my Let's Playing days that I'd love to cover, so if you want to be around for that, please, please, please consider subscribing to my channel. I love showing off cool media that I come across, and I can guarantee that every time I cover a topic, you will be surprised. Otherwise, you can... Stab me in public. I don't know. If you'd like to empower me to do this gig full time, head on over to my Patreon and toss me some fat stacks because I could really, really use it. A huge thank you to my current patrons for believing in me and my work. Those patrons are, of course, Michaela Savage, ATK for May, Gideon King, Chris Schmidt, and Will Oldham. You guys are amazing. Anyway, like the video and maybe check out some of the links in the description. I completely have forgotten what I put down there, but it's gotta be important. Right? Have a swell day, guys. See you next time.